Hi everyone. Today we're going to be having fun creating a very airy, open um, background, just like as if you were looking into a tree and looking out and you'd see all these different colors. What I'll eventually do is I'm going to be coming in and eventually putting some dogwoods on top, which will be in the second video. So the first video, I just wanted to spend a little time working on the background. And so I'm also going to be using um, some sponges that I've cut up and you can see these have been around the block a few times. And these I get at Dollar Tree and I use them a lot for doing a variety of things. And so we're, what we're gonna be actually doing is dry brushing in some of the background. So let's get started. I have mixed some colors. Um, as usual, I will have the instructions up on my website for this. And I've got three different sponges, so we'll see how well I do. I'm gonna start out with this lightest color. And I'm gonna just work it in on my palette paper for right now, because I do not want my sponge to wet. This is gonna be the darkest side. So I'm gonna start at the top and we're gonna be working in circles. Periodically, what I wanna do is go in and use the clean side of my brush. And I hope you can hear me over this rubbing noise. And I'm just rubbing it. It's not gonna look like much, but we have a lot of layers to put in. What I like about using a, um, a sponge like this, it's kind of hard to control. And some of you like that, some of you don't. Some of you would rather just have it all laid out and um, know exactly what's gonna happen to the paint. But I like that I can't control it. So what I wanna do is I wanna take one of these and dampen it. And now I'm gonna come in and just soften everything. Well, that was a little too wet. We don't want to lift the color. So you know how I always say, I don't want you to have a lake on your sponges, just enough to dampen it. And that's what I'm looking for right now. I actually put my paint on a dry sponge. So we're just trying to create a modeled effect. We have lots of layers. I'm going to come in and pull in some more paint. And it's going to be fun. I'm hoping that these will be it will be an easy way to paint um, the doglets. Once we get the background in. So I'm once again, I'm in my clean sponge that just has dampened water on it. And I'm just softening this. This is gonna be really bright over here and it's, and it's darker back over here. Because of the way the light is playing. So I'm using ever so light of a touch as I'm putting this in now. This is back to my dry sponge that has paint in it. I often look at what I'm painting and, and just find it amazing that you all are trusting me as we move forward with a painting. Because sometimes when we start out, it doesn't look like much. And I must say that this looks a little bit like a mess. But we want it to be messy right now. Oh, I redampened it and it got too wet. So we have to be careful with that. This is my sponge that has the paint on it. 
and then just very softly. I'm not trying to create clouds. I'm, it's um, just a variety of colors that are broken up and very modeled. When you look at pictures of um, leaves and, and trees with, and you can see the stuff in the background. This is what we're doing as we're creating the background. I want to just pounce this in. Because I think that blended it really nicely. Okay. And this is the same, I'm not using a lot of paint. And I'm really kind of liking this. I had used some glitter. And I didn't get it all uh, out of my painting area. You have to be so careful when you with, work with glitter. It's really pretty and really shiny, and I love it. But sometimes you find it when you're done with a project, and you don't exactly want to find it. OK, so you can see I've been going back and forth, back and forth. Okay, so it's kind of looking airy, kind of looking like a cloud, but we're going to want to have a lot of colors. So now I'm going to use that same brush, same brush. I, I may call the sponge a brush a lot, and that's only because I'm used to using a um, brush instead of a sponge. So I'm going back in this my same spot, and... What I'm hoping is it's going to blend the two colors a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is just randomly put some of this color in. And again, I'm gonna use my dampened sponge to soften. This is the indication that, hmm, Maybe we're seeing some leaves in the distance that are just blending in with these modeled colors. Let's put a little bit of green down here. Okay, I'm gonna. Dampen this up here and then put in and put this down. Yeah, that's going in a little bit softer. Okay, we're gonna again just soften this. So I want to go and I want to get smaller now and I'd love to continue using the sponges so you could cut them and make them smaller. And that's what I'm going to do with this one. You could also, also use a dry brush. But I'm going to go in with a little bit Again, this is dry, and I just saw that there was a drip of water here. So I've got this lighter color, blue. And what I want to do is just hit some smaller areas. And I want to see if I can control this with a smaller sponge. I think it's working fine. I'm trying to add some depth. So I'm looking for areas where it has some of the um, blue showing through. And I'm just highlighting those areas. So you can see up here, it's looking like there's a lot more depth than down here. And I'm keeping this nice and soft.
I'm taking a little bit more time and blending as I go. This is going to just keep getting lighter. I actually based the whole canvas in my darkest color. I want it to have a springy look to it also. And I have to apologize, some of my um, videos last month, I was having a little trouble with my audio, and I think I got it all settled down. It almost sounded like I was in a tunnel. So I'm not going to bring too much of this light stuff down here. If I want more texture, I'll go in the other colors that I already had. The more layers we're putting on, the softer it's going to look, and we want to go nice and slow as we start adding more of these lighter colors. We need to be a little bit more selective. And you see, I keep going back to the same spot. And then even though I cut it, I'm using, I'm, I don't know, just using my fingers to scrunch it. And that's allowing it to get even smaller as I'm continuing in. Right now and then I like the way it um, drags on my fingers. So I think it makes it look even softer and a little bit more moody. We definitely want the original color to peek through here and there. So make sure you don't do too much of this light color. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of looking at it and going, hmm, I wonder where I want to bring up this up. I wonder where I want to lighten this area. Being a little selective. Um, I do have the lighter green. I'll go ahead and go in that. And let's see if we can go just in the center of those areas and lighten them up a little bit. So I'm going wherever there was a darker green. I'm just coming over and kind of highlighting those areas. Again, adding more depth. Whoops. That came in a little bit heavy. So I can take my finger, especially because it's being dry brushed, and just soften it up. Fingers are the best tools. Also, you have to be careful along the edge of the canvas because the canvas 
um, is raised up on the edges. And so it will take the paint faster than on the actual body of the canvas. Now we're gonna go into the lighter. Well, actually, I think it's time for a brush. So I am going to use a domed um, blender. Um, this is made with hog hair. Um, you can find them at craft stores or um, online. And what I want to do, I keep dripping water in that same spot. I do want this brush to be completely dry. Let me towel dry this. Oh, well, happy accident, right, girls? We're going to just use this brush and we're going to this away. Okay, did you see what happened? I got some paint on here when I blotted it. Okay, so now I'm going to go into my lighter color. The lighter color blue. Actually, let me back up. And I'm going to go into my medium blue because this is going to come in brighter because we're using a brush. And then what I do is I work it until there's only a residue of paint left. I don't want any blobs of paint on my brush. And I'm gonna very lightly use a circular motion. And we're just highlighting these areas. I'm glad I went into my medium blue because you can see just how much brighter it is because I'm using a brush. And it's because the sponge absorbs a lot of the paint. And so that just every tool that you use will apply color differently. If I were to come in with water, it would um, also look a lot brighter. I didn't take as much paint out, so what I'm trying to do is just kind of go in the center of where I've been. So I'm coming back over here. And this is still the second color blue. And I'm not using on the paint, so I can really get a lot done with this bigger brush. I'm liking the way it looks. You can see it kind of looks like the sun's dancing around. We'll put a few more sprinkles in here as we go. So if I see that it's a little bit bright, what I'll do is what I just did is just move my brush around and then come back and soften it. I'm going to work this a little bit more. And now I am making it to appear like it's just more like circles, like little glints peeking through from behind this. I'm liking this. This is kind of what I've had in my head. Because the picture I have is has this in blue and brown tones, 
to see. No, it really, you really can't see it in the picture, but I was like, oh, that would be pretty in blue tones then. Because whenever I think of dogwoods, I think of spring and happy colors, and that's what I wanted for this. Okay, let me go into, well, we'll use the same brush. I'm going to just really make sure I work the paint out of my brush. And we're going to try to go into the centers now, really convincing the eye that there's some sparkles going on and that there's some sun hitting every now and then. going back and softening them. I don't want anything to look too harsh because this is, again, everything's at a distance. Just realize I don't think I've done a video on how to create clouds with dry brushing. So easy to do. I will add that to my list any of you have things you want to learn, just add it to the comments and I'll put it on my list. But since I'm supposed to be semi-retired, I'm only doing one or two videos a, a month. Okay, so I'm thinking that's looking a little spotty, so I'm going to just soften them. I still want it to look like they're Lens of sun peeking through the leaves. Yes, I like it a little bit softer. Okay. And then um also going to come in with the lighter green which will probably look dark. Oh, it's looking nice and light. And I may even overlap some of these. Oh, I like that. So maybe the sun's hitting in some leaves. And so we'll do that to a few of these. Not all of them. Okay, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I was thinking I might want to come over with some white, but I think white would just be too harsh because I do want this to look like it's in the distance. And I'm really liking what I have. I'm going to come into my first light color and break down just a few of these lights. I think we have too many spots. And so this is what I do as I paint. I, I get things in, I step back, I analyze what's happening. And if I like it, I move forward. If I don't, I just make a few adjustments. And I think it's good for you to see that every now and then too. Okay, I'm liking that a lot. Now, you wanted to add some more darks on it. I don't want to, but you could come back in with the original base coat color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this um, cure, and then I'll transfer this design on, and we'll be back to um, paint the diamonds. Well, I forgot to say, 
If you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.